we got some uh, live stuff. We're going to actually do some wiring today. I'm going to go through some slides first and uh, then come back and show you how these things actually will wire to your furnace and your and your thermostat, right? Because that's uh, at the end of the day, that's what you have to do. So let's go through some slides. Uh, we're going to mainly talk about humidifiers. You know, it's the humidifier season, or we're heading into it anyway, right? Should be doing some cleaning checks right now. And, um, uh, but we will go through a few things. So like Tyler said, we do have a full IEQ line and, you know, in the last year and a half or so, homeowners have really been uh, worried about their indoor air quality a lot more than they ever have been with COVID and everything. So, you know, <clears throat> the best way to, to get your house uh, uh, ready for that is to make sure that it's ventilated, right? Ventilation is actually the 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 best uh the best way to get that bad air out of your house and replace good air with it uh you want a good uv light that'll that'll go over your coil and keep things from growing on it and uh, a lot of these uv lights like ours has a nice pco that'll take some uh some of the bad stuff out of the air as well then a good filter to go with that furnace that uh that'll that'll capture more than just your one inch filter you know a good four inch media is uh, great to get get those particles out of the air and trap them. Of course, you want to run your fan when you have a big filter cabinet because if your fan's not running, your filter's not working, right? And then we got the humidifier. So control uh, humidifier or dehumidifier. You want to control that humidity, right? So I'm gonna uh, move. We we make everything for that, and we make a control that will run it. But let's talk about humidity in the home. I'm gonna go to this chart here. If you can, uh, there you go. So this is ASHRAE's chart for uh, for for a, to have the proper humidity for indoor air quality for the maximum indoor air quality. If you notice, you don't really want to go above 60% in the house because things start growing, right? You have bacteria, uh, viruses really for, uh, flourish in those. You get molds start to take hold in a house over 60%. Um, you notice there's mites on there. Well, what that is is dust mites, right? So if you got a real humid house. Uh, dust mites live in your bedding. They like to eat your skin flakes. I know that's nasty, right? But it's also reality. And if you're, you know, I'm not asthmatic, but I, I'm, I have allergies, so I have to use an inhaler every now and then. Those things bother me, right? So I try to keep the humidity in check to keep those things from happening. Well, then let's look at the flip side of the coin there. As you get down to the bottom chart is actually the outdoor temperature. If you start getting the house dried out, well, you, you lose your defenses uh, that you have naturally, like your, you know, your nose. And if it, your nose gets dried out, you got you got a better chance of getting sick, right? Because you don't have your 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 uh, yearly defenses in there that that keeps a lot of that stuff from from getting inside you. Bacteria and viruses are a big deal when it's dry, so we want to keep that moisture in your home as much as possible. Respiratory infections go up. Um, uh, all these things start how you start drying out your uh, house and your floors will pull apart, right? So those floors start to pull apart because they, the the water that the moisture that was in the home is starting to leave the home. That your your it'll start uh, pulling the water out of those out of those uh, those wood floors and furniture. If you got a, a grand piano or whatever, and they'll crack them and they'll just pull them apart. Also, uh, we're made up of water, right? You know, as a human, we're like 70% water ourselves. So it'll start robbing from your body and you'll you'll start seeing your cuticles and stuff uh, start to dry out. Well, that's just a, a good sign that you need to add some humidity in there, okay? So when we start going through how do we design these things, Tyler, we have... Uh, um, you have to look at a couple of things. So, you know, if you're just rolling into that house for the first time, you have to look at a few things. Is the house new? Is it is it is it 10 years old? Is it 80 years old? That the the tightness of the house usually uh, goes with the um, the age of it, and that's not always true. There might be some remodeling done, but generally, as a rule of thumb, you can ju judge the tightness of the house by the, when it was built, right? And is it tight, average, or loose? Because that's going to determine which humidifier you're going to put in there. Then you have to look at ceiling height too. If you if we were laying carpet in a house, we'd only have to worry about the length and the width. But because we're actually adding humidity to the volume of this room, 
or the house, we have to do the cubic feet. And to calculate that, it's length times width times ceiling height to get the, 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 the uh, cubic feet of that space so we can get that in there, okay? Um, your indoor temperature, if your homeowner really likes that thing to, uh, uh, likes that, um, that, that indoor temperature at 75 degrees or something, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to dry the house out even faster. So uh, kind of know your customer and ask these questions. And then look at some of the ventilation sources. Do they have a fireplace with a with a flue that's open? You know those 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 fireplace flues that are open in the winter, they will actually suck the uh, um, uh, the humidity right out of the house like a straw. Um, HRV, uh, you know we we sell a couple of different ventilation products. One's an HRV, one's an ERV. If you have an HRV, it will actually dry that house out, right? So. In the winter time, I mean, if you live in Canada, you're fine. But if you got an HRV in Indiana or or Tennessee or Florida, it's gonna it's gonna be bad, right? Um, it's you need uh, um, we we really recommend uh, energy recovery ventilators for those markets. So if you put an HRV in a market that that needed an ERV in the winter time, it's just gonna suck the humidity out. And actually, in the summertime, it's gonna suck the humidity in. So it's just not good for for uh, four season climates. You really want a cold climate for that thing. Um, open windows, uh, um, I used to cover Chicago and on the lake shore there, there's a lot of old buildings that are running off steam uh, uh, steam boilers and they don't have a control for the heat. So they open the windows uh, to let, uh, you know, really cold Chicago air come in there and mix with that, that overheating. Well, if you try to introduce humidity in there, cause they may have uh, an air handler uh, that runs uh, the air conditioning that's separate from the the steam heat, it'll just uh, it'll just suck the humidity right out the windows. So, um, and then if you got a really old house, it's going to breathe, and that's going to make you're going to have to really uh, um, going to have to really put those uh, uh, adjust your 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 sizing to accommodate those those uh, those different building conditions. So know what you're in when you're when you're when you're checking these things out. Now, when you look at ASHRAE's, uh, uh, you know, how to calculate cubic feet of space and how much uh, humidity you're gonna need in there, once you get the length times width times ceiling height of the, uh, and let's say you got a 20,000 square foot, or excuse me, 20,000 cubic feet structure, if you look at the tight line at 20,000 cubic feet, you'd only need 8.6 gallons a day to hit 35% humidity in there. If that same house was average built, you'd need 14.3 gallons of humidity introduced in there to, to give you the uh, the right amount. If it was loose, you'd need 21 gallons a day. So that's gonna be bad, right? <laughs> Excuse me. So this uh, sizing a humidifier in our steam humidifier box and our humidifier literature, we actually will tell you how many gallons a day you would need to add um, based on those uh, cubic feet. So if it was a 24,000 square foot house that was uh, tight, well, I would, I would add the 11 gallons per day would be fine. If it's average, I'd put 220 volts to that thing and get 22 gallons a day out of it. But if that house was loose, I may need to add two, uh, two of those uh, steam humidifiers to that system to, to actually produce enough humidity. So make sure you use the sizing charts based on cubic feet, not square feet. And if you need a copy of it, get with your Jackson guys or, or, and, and girls and we'll send it out to you, okay? So the first thing you wanna be careful with when you get to that job is to make sure that that plenum pressure is not too high, okay? This is probably the most common, commonly overlooked procedure when a, when a contractor is putting in that humidifier, no matter the brand, okay? All brands have a, have a supply pressure uh, a limit that, that you have to worry about. If it's a bypass, if you look at this top, the top line there, that's just the Honeywell numbers, that's the HE100, 150, 200 and 250, those are our bypass, basic and advanced. You can't be over 0.3 inches of water column or you're gonna blow water off the pad, okay? If you blow water off the pad, it's gonna end up in the floor. 
Now, if you look at the bottom line, that's the HE300. That represents our power dehumidifier. If your static pressure in the plenum is over 0.4 inches of water column, it will blow the water off the pad by overcoming that, that, uh, that fan. So make sure that you use your magnahelic or however you have, you know, whatever kind of tester you have that'll read static pressure, plug it in before you even attempt to put a humidifier on there. Manage that static pressure first, okay? Then you can go pick a humidifier to put on. So we have a couple of different, uh, different versions. Let me show you how, um, how we do this. So uh, well, there's two types of humidifiers. There's evaporative and there's steam. So what evaporative means is that I've got a wetted media pad in there and I have to steal air, I have to steal air and heat from that furnace for that thing to work, okay? Um, you know, some people put hot water, some people put cold water, that's up to you. But what makes an evaporative work is it has to have, it has to have heated air blowing through there. Um, and then the, the humidity can, can attach itself to the heated air and go into the home as humidity, okay? All of them are going to be controlled with a humidistat. We need the warm air from the furnace flowing through it. Uh, the pad, you know, we got a constant uh, uh, stream of water going down through there. Um, and that's how it evaporates into the duct, okay? Um, the humidified air gets into your house that way um, uh, through, the, through your central duct system and out to the rooms. Now, steam, it does not require the furnace to be on, okay? We just need to force the fan on from that furnace or air handler or the geo or whatever you have, okay? And the steam is gonna um, be a lot different than the evaporative. So I'm gonna start with the evaporative and then we'll get, we'll get into the steam here. So if you look at the slide, our steam humidifier, I mean, our, our evaporative humidifier that's what that's what's actually going on in there. I mean, it's really just a pad and a drain and a water supply, not a whole lot to it. Um, the water goes up to the top through the, the feed tube. The water distribution tray gets it nice and even across the whole top, <clears throat> goes through the pad. And as the dry air goes through the pad and the, and the hum it, it grabs uh, that water that 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 as much as it can. Right. Because we're talking about dew points. And then uh, what can't get absorbed is drained back down through the drain, okay? And the basic humidifiers, they, they use a lot of water to do that, right? Um, but that's just the kind of the trade-off you have to do to get the humidity in the home. So when, we, uh, when you look at um, our different models, right, to choose from, we have a whole house bypass that's pretty basic. I mean, there's, there's nothing really special about it. It, 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 it mounts on the duct work, you, you hook duct work to it, you put, you hook it up to a control, you, you power it with 24 volts, you add a drain to it, and, is, is, and when the heat's on, it's gonna humidify the house, okay? Uh, you look at our, our middle selection there, that's our more advanced models. They're gonna have some features that I'll go over that actually save that water. So instead of dumping four gallons down the drain for every gallon of water I get in humidity, we're gonna, we're gonna, um, we're actually gonna save uh, a third to half of that on some of the models. I'll tell you which ones. The steam, it's, it's almost a one to one. You know, you put a gallon in, you almost get a whole gallon back out. There's some uh, procedures on there that will allow that we have to dump some of that water every now and then uh, to, to maintain a, a certain uh, hardness in there and some, some other things that we have in our algorithm but it's about a coffee cup's worth of water a day that goes down that drain, which is very little. So when we look at our evaporatives, um, you know, to, how, how, are we, how can we be different than just the other commodities that are usually out there? You know, humidifiers have really turned into, hey, you know, let's just put it on there without much, set, you know, talking about anything else. But so we wanted to, to improve the design to make it easier to put in, but also save the homeowner money on uh, on operation of this thing. So when you look at our TrueEase evaporatives, these are the advanced models, right? Um, I can access that pad from left or right, or I can open up the top lid and it's engineered to pull out the top. So if I'm in a closet or something and I can't get out of either side, that it, it's a, that top access is, is amazing. And it gives you just a real nice, easy access to that, that pad. Um, when we look at how we uh, designed them, if you break down and take the lid off of this thing, 
you notice there's a board in there and that board actually uh, pulses our solenoid and it will get the pad wet and you can only get the pad so wet, right? It dries it out and then it gets it wet again. And the action of that really starts saving some water for that homeowner. And, and, and if you think about water savings, I pay a water bill, I pay a sewer bill, and if and if you're a contractor that uses hot water, they're they're heating that with electric or gas, so that can really add up if you're not saving that water uh, by all the other uh, uh, things you're having to to get that water to the humidifier and heat it. And if you're running it down the drain, that's that 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 can add up on your bill. When you look at the fan powered, when you break it open and actually look in there. You notice it's a squirrel cage. That's a, that squirrel cage is a DC squirrel cage. It's very quiet. Um, where uh, our older one was just a propeller, right? And that thing was 70 decibels. If, you, if you're if you putting in variable speed furnaces, those things are very quiet. You actually got to put your hand on the side of it to tell it's even running, right? So when I add that, uh, um, that 48 decibel uh, HE300 uh, Honeywell home version, you're not going to hear that humidifier. Um, because it's quieter than the furnace, okay? Um, so when we get into uh, to breaking down the, uh, the two units, you'll look on the slide there and we have a damper. We have a damper setting uh, that's, that's either, that's a summer, winter damper, Tyler. We have a control panel and that, that's for both of them. Um, you got the supply connection, you got the drain connection, we do put the PC board on our advanced powered and our advanced bypass, and both of them have a pad, right? So it's the same pad we use for our, um, uh, uh, the large humidifier uses the same pad uh, as the powered. So um, we don't, it's the same one we've used with our, even our old models. And then I, I really wanna paint this water picture so you mind, you know, get your mind around it. So here's four gallons of water, right? So that's going down the drain to get one gallon of humidity in the air, right? If you use our advanced bypass, I'm only going to put three of those down the drain. So that's going to save the homeowner some money over the, you know, you could run 20,000 gallons of water down the drain a season, right? So I can cut the third of that out by, uh, or a quarter of that out, right? I'm trying to do Tennessee math here, right? Uh, I can, I can cut a quarter of that out with my advanced bypass, but if I add the powered humidifier, it actually will cut the water in half, okay? The water use in half. So, you know, if you're using cold water or hot water especially, that's gonna really start racking up some, some savings for that homeowner every year. So we wrap up our, 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 our power, our, our, excuse me, our um, evaporative line We've got our basic humidifiers that do not have the boards in them, okay? They're still gonna run four gallons. They work, and they work great, but they're still gonna be like most things on the market that don't save water. If you want to offer your homeowner an upgrade, you're gonna start with the bypass advanced, and that's where you're gonna start getting some water savings. And if you wanna go and give them some real water savings on an evaporative, the HE300 is gonna cut that water in half. Right now, we did bring back our old uh, 18 gallon a day HE365, and that thing does not have water savings, but it's still a nice powered humidifier that fits in some tight spots. Because that that HE300, uh, if you notice, it's got a, a the it, it doesn't break down, right? So you pull the door off the front, and the pads in there. Very simple to change, but in a closet, it's not going to be that fun, right? So then we get into our steam humidifier, which is this, this thing here, right? So our steam humidifier has a canister in it, right? And uh, Indiana is uh, sitting on, we're, we're, we're known for the, the limestone, right? Uh, most, most buildings are made from Bloomington limestone. Limestone's great, and, and uh, Kentucky's full of it too, right? Tennessee's full of it where I'm from. And, uh, the only thing limestone is good for is making uh, materials for buildings. Um, it's also good for filtering the, the iron out of water. So that's why you see distilleries all along the river in Kentucky, because it's actually filtering through that water and getting the, uh, the, the, um, the uh, iron out of it so you can have good water to, to make bourbon and such. And that's why there's distilleries in Tennessee as well. 
but in a humidifier it's not that great right because the calcium magnesium that's in there is left behind right so this canister in this thing is actually gonna um, uh, you have to have the calcium magnesium in the water for the electrical uh, um, uh, to conduct the electricity actually uh, RO water does not really conduct electricity because it's been ripped the minerals have been ripped out of it so this thing needs dirty water right which is good and we got plenty of that stuff so this has uh, two electrodes that come in the top and it completes that circuit and it evaporates that water out of there. And that's why I don't need the furnace to, to have, uh, uh, except for the fan running, I don't need the furnace to help me generate heat. I'm generating all the heat I need out of there. So it's on demand humidity, uh, very flexible. We allow you to hang it straight on the plenum like our, our makeshift plenum here. We also give you a five foot uh, remote hose so if you want to, if you don't have plenum space, you only need a two inch hole in the plenum and you can uh, inject that, uh, that in there with that, that, that uh, hose kit. We also, if you need a longer uh, hose kit, we make a 15 foot uh, hose kit you can buy separate. Um, and you can actually convert that for downflow. If you have a downflow operation there in the manual, there'll be a downflow um, instruction uh, and you're going to need that longer hose kit for that. But 15 foot is the max, right? You can't, you can't uh, you can't stretch that out. Um, we don't allow over 15 foot uh, of uh, of remote. So then we get into breaking down this advanced humidifier and uh, the electrode. So again, duct mountable or um, or you can mount it on the wall and inject it in. Um, it's a real compact. I mean, this thing is really really not that big and full of water. It's not that heavy. I think it's like 12 pounds. So Obviously, you don't hang it on duckboard, right? You need a nice, uh, solid uh, um, thing to screw it to, whether it's a two by four or a, um, you know, or a solid, some sheet metal is fine. Uh, but it does generate the elect, uh, generate the power. I mean, the uh, the humidity for you. If you look at the canister cutaway, I've got two electrodes that are down in the water, and we um, get the water to fill up to about the bottom of that, those electrodes, and then it starts. Uh, um, it starts uh, heating up the water, and then after it um, gets to boiling stage, then you'll notice on your board that it'll say humidifying. It will not go to humidifying until it's actually when steam is existing and running through there. Now, <clears throat> the cool thing about this design is uh, we the algorithm that's on our board actually doesn't fill the canister up and just start shocking the water and having the the minerals fall out of it, okay? We're actually moving up that mineral bar or the, the electrode and it'll start uh, it'll start going bad along the bottom part as it's moving up. And then the, the algorithm, of, uh, that paired with the algorithm that's in the board of letting some fresher, fresh water in, dumping some of the bad water out. And like I said, it's about a coffee cup worth a day, it's not a lot, uh, extends the life of that, um, that canister. So, there's no reason why in a really hard water situation that won't get you through the whole season. I've seen them last a season and a half, uh, but you want to get in the habit of changing that canister every year for your homeowner. Uh, recurring revenue for your business, you know, I mean, that's not a bad thing, but it's also going to make sure that homeowner's got a, got, a, got a fresh canister ready to go to give them uh, humidity all season, okay? So then we look at how, how the breakdown of this thing is. If you look at this slide here, you're gonna have your diagnostics on the front. You got a nice control panel that's gonna give you a, a one button. It's gonna do a couple different things. Uh, you got your PC board in there that's gonna have your wiring. You got your electrical where you, you bring in your high voltage. Now, one thing on a steam, you're gonna be bringing in high voltage every time uh, from the panel. You can't plug this in the wall, okay? Uh, this has 11 amps, whether it's 240 or, or, or 120, right? So you can't just steal that from your furnace plug, right? You're gonna you're gonna uh, not have heat if you do that. So you got to make sure. Can I put this uh, uh, steam in? Uh, if you can't get to the uh, electrical panel, you're gonna have to probably use an evaporative. Okay. You got mounting keyholes in there that's gonna allow you to put that on a on a just a single stud. Or you've got uh, four or five different. Once you take the tank out, you got four or five different places you can uh, uh, screw that into a, to a uh, sheet metal or or the wall. 
you got your steam connection up there that's a uh, um just a, a, a it's like a, a hose clamp you know like any other hose clamp that's holding that on the canister uh the steam canner canister itself got a drain connection you got your supply where your water comes in and uh and that's pretty much all there is to it on that. So if you look at some of the specs, if I if I go 120 volt, it will give you 100, it will give you 11 gallons a day. If you uh, put 240, it'll give you 22 gallons a day output on there. Um, so you want to, uh, from your panel to your um, uh, uh, disconnect that you'd mount in there, you you know you could run uh, number. Um, I guess number uh, 12 wire, right? Uh, and but from your disconnect to your the actual unit itself, I, I want you to use 14 wire because our little lugs uh, don't really like the 12 wire, right? I mean, it'll you'll have to really cram it in there. Uh, so uh, the 14 wires is, is plenty. You know, it handles up to to 15 uh, amps, and this is only 11 amps that you're worrying about here. 12 amps. So you're going to have plenty of, uh, you know, especially for the short run, but you're going to make sure you're not going to have problems getting that into the, the terminal block there. Um, the cylinder, uh, like I said, you replace it every year, usually. Now, some people use uh, um, water softeners and stuff in the house, which is fine. Uh, a lot of the minerals have been swapped out with the salt. Um, but if if you have a naturally... Uh, clean water supply like North Carolina they their their water on the it's really naturally soft right so on people that use uh, canister humid steams down in that area I actually uh, heard of them like taking a Tums and throwing it in there to give the water calcium magnesium to start humidifying so they can leave the job so we pre-salt these tanks so you don't have to throw a Tums in there right and it'll actually start in about 15 minutes. You're going to get up to a full head of steam. You can uh, do your checkouts and you can move on to your next job. Uh, the hose connection, make sure you check both ends, right, every year. Uh, not that they will come loose, but it's just a normal check that you would do. Um, make sure your drain is all cleaned out. Uh, where your hose connection or your water connection comes in, you want to shut the water down unscrew that there's actually a filter in there like that'll that's capturing stuff you want to thump that out once a year as well okay so if you look at this this drawing it's actually showing you a direct duct mount and a remote uh, mount so again uh, um, these things can uh, handle up to two inches of water column before they start reversing the airflow on you so where evaporatives and and bypass, you have to really watch that uh, that static pressure. These can handle up to two inches of water column. Yes, ma'am. So the steam one uses a dedicated circuit. You have yes. So the question was, does the steam have to have a dedicated circuit from the main panel? Yes, it does. Now, uh, sometimes you might have something that's pulled from the main panel in a mechanical room that's a sub panel. That's fine. As long as it is, has 11 amps of dedicated power that you can provide that steam, okay? If you don't have that, you're gonna have to pull a wire from that panel. And 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 otherwise, uh, if you try to steal it from a furnace or something, it's not gonna have enough power and it's gonna trip trip the breaker. And if they're in Florida and, they're, and they don't have a, a, a Wi-Fi stat that tells them or whatever, it's gonna be trouble. So it's a great question. Uh, make sure you 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 uh, you power these things appropriately. Is that it? Okay. All right. So, a couple of different uh, things you can have. Uh, you can you you know our part numbers are are one thing. Not a whole lot of replacement parts on this thing. So, there's a cylinder that you replace every year. You can order some. Uh, you know, if your nozzles were to compromise, you can order those. Uh, your drain valve. Uh, those things. Uh, you know, in the case they go bad, you can you can change them. Uh, your electronic board, uh, and and really that's that's about it. You can order then your steam hose kit to get an extra 15 feet. All of our advanced humidifiers and our basic uh, Trueys. I think we had another question. Is that? Oh, okay. Uh, our our uh, advanced models and our basic uh, uh, 
uh, Truly systems will come with this uh, this Humida Pro, which is a really nice control, right? Hopefully you got a thermostat that's doing that, but not everybody does, right? So the Humida Pro, you can mount it on the wall or in the duct, and it's got a little duct probe that comes in the box. You can drill, drill a little half inch hole, and that'll mount on the return duct and stick inside there to, to measure the humidity if you need to do that. Now, it comes with an outdoor uh, sensor that gives you frost protection for the um, for the windows, right? So if you don't add the, the outdoor sensor, it's just gonna be a regular uh, humidistat. And if the windows get wet, you gotta run down there and turn it down to keep the windows dry. But if you have that outdoor sensor, and you have the, you got your humidity setting and you got your um, your setting on there that's your frost protection. That's a one to 10, right? The closer you are to 10, the more output it's gonna give you. The closer you are to one, the, it's gonna start restricting the output based on the outdoor temperature. So you gotta find the right algorithm. I think out of the box, it's set at six, so it gives you kind of in the middle. Um, and then the homeowner, if they start seeing if their windows are dry, but they need more humidity on a 20 degree day, they can move that up one uh, or two. Or, but if they if it's set on six and they start seeing uh, sweat, you know, the water sweating on the windows, they can actually move that down one, wait 24 hours. And if it dries the windows out, you're automatic, all right? And it'll move with the outdoor temperature. And that's pretty cool. If you, just because we put this in the box and you don't use it because you have a thermostat to control the humidity, don't throw it away because it's also a dehumidistat. You just go into the installer setup and change it to dehumidification. It's, it swaps the recovery ramp or the, excuse me, the humidity ramp and you're able to uh, uh, to use that for a dehumidifier. So save it. You got a question? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ace has a question. The canister needs to be replaced once annually, correct? Uh, we're, it, you know, we, we recommend once, uh, the, the question was, do I need to replace the canister once a year? It may last more than the whole year. I mean, they, they generally do, um, but uh, even if they do, you might want to change it, right? Um, the only thing, it's going to run until the, 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 the light on here that says uh, the cylinder light will come on and that'll tell you, hey, um, it needs to be changed. So. If you go out and you change it every cleaning check year, like every fall for the homeowner, they got a fresh canister, they're ready to go. So if you wanna let it go until the light comes on, you might have to roll your truck back. So that's why we recommend doing it while you're out there annually. Um, but that's a great question. Um, it's, it's just your choice, okay? All right, now when we look at the, the breakdown of this uh, humidistat, um, you got your large back screen, Tyler. You got your large back screen on it. Uh, it's gonna, it's just like our old Focus Pros, if you remember those thermostats. Um, it's good, it's, you know, it's really bright, so it's powered. So it's always gonna have, the, it's always gonna be lit up. Now, if you have it in the house, you can go in the installer setup and make that dimmer or, um, you know, or cut off until you wanna touch it. Uh, but most of the time, it's just gonna stay lit for you. You got your current uh, relative humidity. You got your, your setting that the small number is going to be your window protection if you have it. You got system off, on, oh, and you got your, oh, yeah, actually, there's your control light there at the bottom. I'm sorry. You can auto or off it right there. And then you got your two button set point adjustments. And you don't have to set this up out of the box. It's set up for a humidifier out of the box. To make it uh, uh, work with window compensation, you just add the outdoor sensor and run it outside and you're good to go. Now, that's just the Humida Pro. We also have a Prestige IEQ, uh, Redlink Vision Pro, the 8321R. We've got the Wi-Fi Vision Pro, the T10, that will run a humidifier as, as part of a, you know, just I've got a thermostat running my equipment, I'm online with it. You know, not only do I wanna turn my temperatures up and down, but I wanna run an IEQ device or two. So the Prestige will actually give you three IQ devices. You can run the humidifier, the dehumidifier, and the ventilator from that one device. The Redlink 8000 without the EIM is gonna only allow you to run one, but you can assign it, whether it's a humidifier, dehumidifier, ventilator. The T10 has an assignable um, output as well for that uh, humidifier 
dehumidifier or ventilator, okay? So you're gonna pick one and you're good to go. Um, I don't have my air device monitor with me. It was here yesterday, but I took it home. So um, before we get into the the, the live uh, wiring, well, it's not gonna be live wiring, but to, wire, to show you how to do some wiring, uh, get with uh, with your Jackson uh, rep to to get a hold of me if you want uh, to put. Uh, we make a, a we don't make it, but we partner with Air Advice and we have an air cycle program. And you could take that device on a service call, leave it on the counter, and uh, in 30 minutes, it's going to give you a whole health house report of the conditions of the air. It's going to tell you how, what the particulates are in there, your humidity levels, temperature levels, your VOCs, which is the volatile organic compounds that we actually call it odors and smells because homeowners sometimes don't know what VOCs mean um and uh and it's it's really a program more than just the machine to help you understand IQ and effectively sell it so in 30 minutes it's going to send you a report to your phone or to your iPad um but it's coming to you by email then you can sit down with that homeowner and, and explain to them what you found in their air and it'll tell you which uh, Residio Honeywell home product to use to, 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 to make that work. So um, we're gonna get into some wiring, okay? All right, Tyler. So um, I'm gonna start with the steam, right? So uh, we just kind of took a furnace board here and, and apply, and, and so this is actually your furnace, right? It's gonna have your red, your common, your W1, Y1, G, all the things you're used to, to wiring in. And then your steam humidifier here, you're gonna have your wire coming in that you may have uh, you may have pre-wired for. Let me find my tools. I actually have some tools. So um, from my humidistat, which is here, right? Uh, this is gonna have um, it's gonna have a few. This thing's pretty tight. I'm gonna have a few uh, connections on it. If you can, uh, can you get in there a little bit? I've got my red and my common, and that's gonna power it, right? Because I need power. I've got my two U terminals that are gonna be the to the humidifier demand, right? That's gonna come in here. And then I've got these two S terminals that my uh, my outdoor sensor, um, we package an outdoor sensor, and it's the same outdoor sensor we use with our Vision Pros and uh, T6, T10. Um, so you'll just mount that outside, comes with a little cradle. I'd like to slap whoever wound this up. Um, but that's gonna mount outside, gives you some leads. I'm not gonna try to do that. So that'll sit outside. You wanna put that in a spot where the sunlight's not gonna hit it, right? And that'll give you outdoor, uh, tell that, that little uh, control what the outdoor temperature is. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna wire this sucker up, right? So I'm gonna choose a couple of wires. Um, I chose the uh, yellow and white, right? Because you need to use the same color on both ends, right? Don't be like me. Um, and you're gonna find your humidifier uh, plug-in, which are gonna be right here. And these are push-in terminals. So you don't have to have a screwdriver on this side of it. You push that in and that's gonna hold in. So I just put the two wires in my humidifier. Now. If I was just gonna wire that up to this Vision Pro right here, if you don't mind swinging around, or should I do this? This Vision Pro here, if I'm just gonna wire it into that Vision Pro, then I'm fine. I, I can go into the installer setup here, and let me get into it, and I'm gonna find dealer information. I find my date code. My date code is 1552, that's also the secret password to get in here so the homeowner don't get into it, right? Unless they watch this video, right? And there, I gave a secret away. Uh, 1552, that's uh, gonna be different on every stat, right? So it's it's actually, what that date code is, is that means this thermostat was made in 2015, the, the 52nd week of the year. So that's like the last week of the year, right? There are 52 weeks in the year in there. Am I right? Okay, it's been a while. Um, oh, that said invalid. So maybe I got that wrong. Go back, cancel. Install our dealer information. Oh, 1522. <laughs> Sorry. I'm dyslexic. Uh, so I do 1522. 
and I can get into that installer setup. And then I'm gonna blow up. I'm gonna go through all of my, I'm gonna get, you know, I'm pretending I'm, uh, I've already set everything up. I'm gonna get over to my, um, my humidifier options. And, uh, cause I can only do one, right? I got one uh, set of U terminals, so I have to pick. So here's my humidifier. It's gonna give me none. It's gonna give me fan or bypass or steam. Well, I'm doing a steam on this model, right? So I, I'm, and then it's gonna say, it's tied to my thermostat, uh, U terminal, my window protection. I'm gonna turn it on, right? <coughs> Excuse me. I can turn it off if I'm not gonna use it, but since this is a Wi-Fi thermostat, it brings in the outdoor temperature uh, through weather.com. So I don't even need an outdoor sensor with that Wi-Fi stat or the, any of my Wi-Fi stats, you don't need that, okay? Um, the Red Link, you're gonna have to use the Red Link outdoor sensor uh, because um, we don't allow that two-way communication through the Red Link. It's a different security protocol because we use these Red Link stats in our in commercial jobs as well as residential jobs. At Wi-Fi, you can, you can get that two-way traffic, okay? So then it's gonna ask me, use the humidifier and heat mode. Well, if I got a steam, I can say yes to that. I can also let it humidify in off mode and it will turn the fan on with a call for humidity. Um, if I, and I wanna say humidifier uh, control, the thermostat controls the fan, okay? That way, no matter what's going on, if, this, if the thermostat calls for that humidifier to turn on, it's gonna turn the fan on, okay? Um, now, there's a couple of different ways that, um, uh, um, you know, that we can also turn the fan on. On our advanced units, on the side here, there's a GT and a GF terminal, okay? And I'm going to show you that more in detail on the, on the um, bypass when, I, when, I, uh, when we go to it. Uh, but the GT and GF terminal allows you to take the green wire from the furnace because GF stands for green furnace, okay? GT stands for green thermostat. And the, therm the green wire between your furnace board and your thermostat or your air handler and your thermostat is what turns your fan on, obviously. So I'm gonna cut that in half. I'm gonna bring the green wire from my thermostat and put it in GT, the green wire from my furnace board to GF, and that's gonna uh, force the fan on with a call for humidity from a control like our Humidipro, or especially if you're gonna do zoning, right? When you do zoning, right? Especially uh, um, uh, it, really any brand, right? Um, you got your equipment side, then you got your thermostat side, right? So if I hook a, a thermostat like the Wi-Fi 8000 to zone one, let's say, I gotta find zone one, zone one, and I tie the humidifier into that on this side of the fence, right? And I'm at rest on my zones, but I'm calling for humidity. It will shut my other zones down because it thinks that you're calling for fan on that on that one thermostat. And those other zones at rest will shut the damper and you'll only really be humidifying one zone. So if you break the, the green wire from the equipment side through the GF and GT terminal, you don't have that, that, that system shut down on the other zones. It will actually flow humidity to all zones. So if you're doing zoning, you wanna use our advanced model bypass, our advanced model powered, or that steam advanced, okay? And, and, and those, those relays are already built into our, 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 our equipment, and that's, that's just gonna help you have a better, uh, a better um, uh, a uh, better humidity environment, a better situation for the homeowner. It's just everything's going to be working correctly. Okay. So, some of the things um, that's the low voltage part of that steam. There's also a jumper in there on the side, and I'm going to try to do this without it falling. Right. There's a jumper in here. It's right here. Now, it comes plugged in ready for 22 gallons a day. Okay. That means it's 240 volt. If you're gonna use 110 voltage, you actually have to make that field adjustment and put that clip in there 
and that's gonna um, that's gonna give you 110 volts. So you can wire it up appropriately. That's gonna make your little block here be um, a ground, a neutral, and a hot, right? If I go back to 240 volt, because that's what I need to get 22 gallons a day, then that's going to give you a ground and a and a L1 line one and line two for your for proper humidity, okay, or for proper power. Um, there is a furnace fuse in there. It's a little automotive type fuse in case you make a low voltage mistake. You don't have to take the whole thing back and and uh, get a new board or whatever. Uh, but it's a very solid piece of gear, and I've I've been very happy with it out in the field. Um, these uh, these keeper cylinder change uh, clean out. Uh, make sure you take this off once a season. Uh, it's actually a little uh, it's up underneath there. You need to um, it's it's got a little screen. You just kind of scratch it off, right? Uh, make and then you put that back on. You'll check your drain out, right? You'll you, and, and and make sure everything's cleared out of there and you're good to go. Change that tank. So I'm gonna swap this out with this bypass real quick. Now the bypass is really cool. It's uh, it gives me a couple things I can do. I gotta find the bottom piece. I think it's over here. So one of the things that I used to hate as a contractor, service tech, whatever, is going out there and this is a five-year-old humidifier and nobody ever changed the pad. I mean, that never happens, right? It happens all the time. Well, these things don't just last forever. You have to do some really good annual maintenance on this thing. If you hook it to cold water, um, it's not going to have as much uh, calcium magnesium fall out of the water because it falls out of hot water faster. If you hook them to hot water, it's going to have white stuff all over, right? So um, that's fine. It's just you get, you may have to change your pad more often. Um, you need to change it annually for sure. So there's a change pad light here. If 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 you have this hooked up, uh, um, and I'll show you some wiring on, that we're doing on the board. If you have that hooked up to where it's uh, the red and the white from the furnace board is tied into it, it'll it'll clock the runtime hours. And after 5,500 runtime hours, it's gonna it's gonna pop off the change pad light. If you just have it running from the thermostat here, it's gonna be uh, like a a year's worth of time, or or um, and then it'll it'll pop it off as well. The reason we do that is we want the homeowner to see, have a visual cue that, I mean, they, they'll see a flashing light and they're going to react to it. They'll go over there and see change pad and then and then um, they're going to call you. This Now up here at the top, you can order um, private labels from us and you can have your company logo and your information. You can plop, plop it on there. It's the same one we use for our filters our uh, dehumidifier they all have the same little spot for you to put your you just get order a roll of them from us and you can get them for free if they're if they're black and white but uh for a small charge you can get them a uh, real good card stock uh color for your company so some of the things uh that that really stink about uh bypasses is um in the past is you'd have to totally rebuild the thing to make the return duct uh, or the, the duct face the, the right way for the return. The return could be on this side instead of this side. So what we tried to do is instead of having to rebuild the whole thing, you just take the whole middle section out and you pop it right back in that direction. And now you just, you just saved about 20 minutes of field time of not having to tear something apart and rebuild it, right? Now, if I want to pull that out of the side, I'm going to have a problem because I'm going to have duct work in the way here, right? So I can go in and pop out, pop this side out. It, there, it um, has little connections where I can mount that. And now it's going to be in that side. I got to pop it in, okay? So that's going to be in there, and then this little handle has a uh, has a little uh, a connection that'll 
uh, it's like a keyhole deal. I'll flop it over to this side. And now I can just put that in and I just change the direction of my, uh, my pad removal if I want, but I can still come out the top. So if I pull down, we engineered this top where it's got these little grooves in there. So I can actually pull down on the top uh, and pull it towards me and it'll come straight out. On our pads, there's gonna be a little red uh, stripe. That's the top of the pad. You put it in upside down and uh, you're not, you know, these little grooves are flowing the wrong way. So red stripe up, right? You uh, place it right back down in there, put it in the bottom of the feed tray, and you just change out your pad. Very simple. Put the, the top, you know, you don't have a lot of people or old designs, they got screws, right? Now I've, I've, I've had it happen myself. The screws will rust out and stuff. None of these have screws, right? Uh, we still have a model that does, right? That's our lower cost, uh, you know, whatever you wanna call it, but these don't, right? So uh, we make a, a, a unit that doesn't have a board in it, that still has the, the nice uh, move the design around and um, you know, I'm, I'm not doing water savings, but I don't, I'm not really worried about it. It still has a real easy install. Now this thing installs right out of the box. I don't have to take it apart to put it in, right? Um, it, it's got two little feet on the bottom that, that clip on the duct. And then the outside screws on the top, you just pop two zip screws in and you've installed your humidifier. Um, but when we talk, start talking about this board, if you can zoom in on the board here, I'll try to help you. We've got power, right? The power in has to come from a constant source of power when you have a board, okay? If you just had a two wire solenoid version, that's fine. Uh, you're just gonna, you can hook those to the uh, spade clip on the furnace or however you're gonna get the 24 volt. These, because uh, they have, um, uh, we're monitoring the runtime and, and uh, in the furnace runtime and stuff, I need constant power from the furnace. So don't uh, don't uh, steal the power from the EAC terminal or whatever on the the furnace board. Just use the add a transformer in there, usually from the the switch, the shutoff switch, disconnect for the furnace, and power this thing up. Then you look here, we've got an airflow sensor, and that's on the steam or the the bypass. If you do nothing, it won't look for a sensor. But if you want a, we make an airflow switch that, that looks for a, a certain static pressure before it will turn the unit on, okay? The next set of, uh, of uh, I've got power output. So I've actually got this wire in there. I'm gonna take it out. So the power um, is actually giving me um, uh, 24 volts to power my, my, my little humidistat, right? So, wow, look at that. So, I'm gonna have to have, uh, I, can't, I can't figure this out with the camera. I'm gonna have to have 24 volt power uh, to power my humidistat. So I don't have to add another transformer once I have this thing powered. I can just take it from here and power that humidistat if I need it. Then I've got hum control. That means my um, uh, where I'm gonna tie it to, my control. If it's a two wire thermostat like my uh, Vision Pro here, you mind switching, get, get me over here. So if I'm just gonna two wire into this, I would I would have on the back of my thermostat here, I'm gonna just use the two wires that comes in with my U terminal and take it straight over to the humidifier control and I got a two wire install. Other than my power, that's all I need to wire in, okay? Um, if I'm gonna uh, if I'm gonna be heat only, right? You notice over here on the equipment side, I've got a red I got a GF and a GT and a common. I'm gonna take my red and common and I'm gonna run it down to my furnace board. And I'm gonna take my uh, my W and run it down to the W. That's just gonna monitor when the heat's on. So, and, and we have some dip switches here, right? If you're gonna, you're gonna leave them as they come out of the box, make sure you look at your install uh, manual for, for the, uh, whether you're gonna use heat only or use a prestige to force the fan on. Or, uh, or however you're gonna run it with the heat or without the heat. Um, but if it's monitoring the heat, you have to have uh, both those switches 
to the left and it clearly says that. Now, you can't see it because it's a really small dip switch. I've got the top one moved over to the right because I'm simulating that being tied into one of my uh, controls, like a, a thermostat that that will actually run uh, the, um, the humidifier and, and force the fan on with a call for humidity. So just a simple two-wire install, if you're gonna um, if you're gonna do that, right? But because I have those GT and GF features here, if I'm gonna interface it with a zone panel, I've, I'm already set up. That's why you want to go advanced with zoning. If I um, if I'm gonna use the little humidistat, right? And I want to force the fan on with a call for humidity, I got the GT and GF on the steam and the bypass to make that happen. Now. There are times where you can run um, run these without the heat being on, right? Because even in the winter time with no heat on, it's 68 to 70 degrees in the house. Even though these are designed for 120 degree plenum temperature going through, you will get some output at 70 degree air coming through it. So if your design conditions are right on the line, you know, and I'm it just ain't giving me everything I need out of it. If you force the fan on with a call for humidity, it will give you extra humidity out of these systems, okay? Because if the fan, if you don't have heat going through it and there's no air moving through it, it will not humidify, okay? So on evaporatives to get more out of them, force the fan on with a call for humidity and it'll, it'll, give, you, it'll give you more output, okay? So a lot of stuff we crammed into an hour. I appreciate the time. Do we have any questions? Anybody, Ace, you still out there? That's what a name, man. That's like the coolest name. Other than what was the guy from uh Constantino from St. Louis, man? We we missed you, Constantino. Come back. If you got any questions, reach out to your people at Jackson. They'll get me on the line and I'll be happy to to answer any questions you have. Thank you for your business. Oh, we got a question. Go ahead. So the humidifier demand is based on your load calculation, right? So um, I've got, I, I mean, I got guys that have two systems and they put, you can put the steam on and get 22 gallons a day out of it. It's going to blow it all over the house. Like, Humidity is like burning toast. You can burn it in the basement and smell it on the third floor, right? So it's actually filling that envelope up. You, do, you know, and you, and you might have an attic install, right? You can't put a humidifier in an attic. You're not supposed to. People do. But we don't recommend it because it could freeze unless you got some kind of a, you know, a little house built up there that's going to stay, uh, you know, a little box or something that's heated and you got a drain pan so you won't have water going through three floors in case something happens. You really have to uh, put the, uh, how many gallons a day your load uh, is asking for is what's going to determine how many or how big to put in. Is that is that good enough, Ray? And I forgot to tell Ray's question. He asked, "Can I put one humidifier in a house instead of two if I have two systems?" And the and the answer to that is it depends on your load, right? So when you do your your tight average or loose load calculation, and if you don't have one of those uh, uh, sizing charts. Uh, reach out to Jackson and we'll send you the a the ARI data little chart that has that for you and keep you can print it out keep it on your van or whatever and you can uh, it'll help you size those okay and you can reach out here and we can get on the phone together as well is that it is that all we have uh, Ray thanks for the question and thanks everybody uh, thank you Jackson systems for being a great customer of mine and uh, we'll see you next time <laughs>